Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Mixed Life Episode 8. It's just going to be me and Adam today. Too tall was going to come on and talk too much over me, but I guess he chickened out. No, I'm kidding. He had some technical issues, and he couldn't come on. Uh, but, but he'll uh, he'll probably be on next week, I think, to come in and talk about some of his new recipes. He got published by Flavora this last week. Some of his recipes got fe- featured in their, e- their newsletter and uh, I think on their blog post. So it's pretty cool. Super exciting. Uh, Adam with here. Adam here with me. Hey. Hello, Adam. Hey. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Uh, Mix Life 8. Hope everybody's having a good Sunday. And I'm working on an orange cream right here, a little Oba Oba. And uh, hope you guys are all vaping on something you made or something delicious. And uh, we're here to answer questions, so let us know what you got. And if not, we'll just ramble about stuff. So glad to be here. There he is. He's in chat at least. He's so he's weird. He's here with us in spirit. We're sorry you had uh, bad internet troubles today, dude. So just you know, figure we'll figure it out. We will help you get started. So it'll be chill. It'll be super chill. So today we actually right before we came on, we were talking about. Um, like how people perceive flavors kind of strangely and differently. And uh, we came up to a very uh, kind of not controversial topic, but the flavor Oba Oba, which I love it, right? So to me, it's kind of like a, a bright marshmallow candy. But, you know, so a lot of people report that it tastes kind of like cream soda. Some people say it tastes like kind of like Smarties a little bit. Some say, people say they get a little bit of fruitiness or citrus out of it. Other people don't, so um, we're going to mess with it a little bit and try to recreate a cream soda while I hang out and talk for a little while. But i got to find a few more flavors while I'm at it. Uh, I'm going to take over for a second, Adam, so I can look for this stuff. Sure. So I have uh, – I've been testing the Oba Oba, and uh, I'm, I'm doing it at a 3% because I saw Koppel uses it like – or Coppel uses it uh, at a four. And uh, I use it in another recipe at a three, so I'm testing at that. And I'm using the Oba Oba as a uh, a note on like a, I didn't go out for a cream soda flavor, I went out for an orange cream. And then as I'm working with the vanillas, it kind of, uh, the the cream soda of it really uh, came out nicely with the oba oba so we were kind of all in chat talking about doing cream soda anyways and then uh concrete river had a good kind of way to go where he was looking at uh vanilla swirl and oba oba for the base and then uh christopher is testing the flavors and his ginger peach he thinks is real close to it so those are kind of all the the tests going on as he's working on a cream soda today and then i'm i'm on the second test here uh with this orange cream and with the orange cream the trouble i've always had is the orange ends up being harsh the cream tastes fine but the orange is kind of just like one note and sharp and something I did in this one is I used uh, 1% of Philippine mango almost as like a hidden piece of the orange. And it really made it a lot more juicy. Uh, has a has a real nice flavor to it. And it's only been two or three days. And then the Bavarian cream, uh, when, it, when, it, when it all mixed together, the vanilla was really there. So without having to add more vanillin or like a vanilla custard to it, the Bavarian cream actually handles it. Now, the other thing that's cool is when I'm using a a perfume, perfume apprentice, flavor apprentice, I'll search the flavor apprentice MDS, and then it'll bring up this page. And on that page is every flavor of the flavor apprentice. Then if you hit the link that says list, it'll tell you the ingredients or the flavor compounds that they use and sort of the percentage. And you can see if uh, there's ethyl maltol hidden in it. 
And you might not need to add cotton candy or EM to it to finish it because it might already be in one of these flavors that you don't know. Uh, so I like to go in there and look at stuff. And then I also like to look at like, so say a Bavarian cream or uh, another TPA would be uh, vanilla swirl or whipped cream and go in there and see like maybe there's hidden sweeteners in them. Maybe there's different ingredients inside the, the flavor that's going to help what you're mixing. So I like to go in there and look at those. So that's also really helpful. Uh, and you just type flavor apprentice MDS and it comes up. So that's like a hidden link on their site. All right. I'm just about done uh, doing the math on this real quick and then I'll start mixing it up. So I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with flavor with root beer, vanilla bean ice cream, ginger peach, some almond, oba oba, and salty caramel to round out like the cream profile. I think we can get pretty close. We, we talked about it before, I think, trying to knock down like cream soda. And it's, I've heard it come up like outside of that like probably 20 times in like the last two weeks. I don't know why it's so popular. But Well, oh, and I think I don't think people appreciate the soda work you did with the, the cherry Coke. I think that's a slept on recipe you did. That, uh, that article, though, I still share. It still gets a, a lot of mileage. Like the article that I wrote before I put out the cherry the cherry version, which is right. literally just like the soda base with cherry added. Like it's not even anything. Yeah, if you guys, if you're looking for a cherry Coke, are you happy with the the juice? Uh, yeah, would you replace yeah, happy with Bing cherry with Rainier cherry or something like that? No, I probably use Inaware cherry. I need to go back and update that. Cherries? Uh, yeah. Cherries, well, either one is probably okay, honestly. I know some people say yeah. they don't like the other, but I like it just fine. If you could get uh, cher cherries and liquor from uh, chefs, they have. Yeah, they I have a, that it's really good. I'm, I have I have a little bit it, of that. But. Like, to me, that comes across like that cherry Coke cherry with that almost a grenadine cherry. Yeah, actually, I'm thinking about messing with Flavor West Cherry Crush. Um, I think it might have sucrose in it, so I don't know if everybody wants to use it, but um, it's one of the better, like, uh, cheaper companies' cherries, especially for beverages and stuff. It, it fits pretty well. It doesn't get so medicinal or weird. The Cherry Crush? Yeah, Cherry Crush is pretty good. I like it. Is that a, uh, is there one called cherry filling too? And then they have, is, or is yeah, the cherry, cherry crush? Filling. So I've heard reports that the Flavora's cherry filling uh, comes across like being cherry, but without the capric triglyceride, which was the flavor that caused them to discontinue being cherry. But well, what is that? Do you know, can you explain? It's kind of like a thickening agent, right? So it gives a more, a more body, right? <laughs> to it um, but it's not a hundred percent it's not proven as safe as an inhalant so there's some concern about whether or not it's a, a safe product uh, I'm not sure exactly what PPM they had it listed as so I don't I don't think it was necessarily really a big thing but I think some people were concerned about it and so they, they do see it and they pulled it off you know I saw a article I'm not quite sure where uh, it was about California doing an air test on a vape shop and they I were testing you posted that somewhere yeah? yeah so they were testing the air to see if there were you know diacetyl and acetin acetin and all these acetone. different acetone and all these different chemicals in the air of like a vape shop that's just like clouded and they actually found that it was pretty much equivalent to just a normal you know, it's California air, so I don't know. Maybe just living in California is as bad as, you know, vaping yeah. somewhere. But it, it, it appeared like the natural, the <laughs> levels of the chemicals weren't really uh, changed from being around the air. And that backs up some other stuff from like about a year ago that was saying that it's 95% uh, gets inhaled. So even when you're blowing out the actual nicotine or whatever you're inhaling, only it's five percent. Yeah, only five percent. Which is way better than a cigarette, folks. 
But yeah, all right, I'm almost done here, and then we'll we'll give it a quick shake and vape test to see how it goes. So couple Coppel's cream soda. Yeah. So basically, it's kind of the same format, except I use uh, Flavor West root beer as the base instead of FA Cola. Um, so I don't. I'll lose a little fizz, I think, but that's all right. And I add some vanilla bean ice cream to really kind of. But I use Flavor West, which is less ice creamy and more vanilla y to kind of stick with the theme of cream in the cream soda. What about carbonation? What do you think? I've uh, talked with this probably with like hundreds of other people, and the truth is that carbonation is kind of not really achievable in a, from a practical approach, right? So you can kind of mimic carbonation with things like, uh, I thought that was spelled PG everywhere, um, with things champagne. like, with TPA champagne a little bit. Um, but before I get to that, so you can cit citric and malic acid, right? So sour, sour stuff, right? You can use that to kind of give you a little tingle that kind of simulates fizz, but to get it high enough to really get any real tangible results out of it, you have to almost, uh, I mean, you end up with muting muting your actual flavors, right? So um, so it comes at a loss of flavor. And then if you want to use something like TPA champagne and stuff like that, like you can, and it kind of works. I'm going to get a huge mess here because uh, I don't want to be patient. Um, it's really neat. Like a, uh, like a bubbles. Right. A bubbles flavor. Flavor West any of Champagne that. probably does the best job, but then you have to work within the framework of it tasting like Flavor West Pink Champagne. Right. So someone needs to do just a bubbles. Exactly. Like, um, but I'm not sure that it's even really just a thing that we can do. Like, it, it might just be a. Is that the same kind of thinking with salt, with sodium? Like yeah, it just seems like thing. it just doesn't translate the same into vaping. Like those are two Lavorous, areas. Lavorous beer nuts and uh, DIY flavor shacks pretzel are the two semi saltiest flavors I've ever tried before. Um, are they just putting real salt in in the liquid? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, maybe I guess, but uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna do a quick shout out to Flavor Shack here in a minute too. I want to talk about pretzel. It was pretty. I was pretty impressed with it. I know, uh, but anyway, so, in the chat. If you, oh, T, if you have any thoughts on uh, that, yeah, I think that carbonation. Concrete River did a really extensive article, I think, a few months ago about carbonation, and he tried like ten of the most five or ten of the most typical like methods. Talked about methods, and the end result is that. It you know six and nine weeks even like there's no noticeable carbonation. It really just it just isn't a thing. As much as we'd like for it to be a thing with it, but just with the tools that we have currently, uh, I don't think that carbonation in a vape really translates out very well. I mean, gray hairs are really yeah because the real carbonation you almost need like a tonic, almost a, or like a soda water flavor that would have just that little light bubble bitter that you get out of like a club soda yeah exactly. that might be something if you could do that without like tonic which with all the quinine or whatever the hell that shit's called tastes awful quinine quinine yeah which so, tips on there all the way before i tried to shake this thing or would attack me but if there was a way to There's do bacon soda and vinegar in there vape volcano dave that's good yeah that'll be interesting to vape i wonder though but like it seems they've conquered sweet obsessively. They've conquered fruits, but they really haven't conquered the salty world. So savory but flavors, they were like they were like a trend kind of like a few years ago where people really were chasing like the savory, savory things. Um, and there was some a lot of talk about salt then. You know, people were chasing the saline and everything else, but. I think in like 99% of the time, um, the saline is pointless unless you're trying to dry out your vape and make it more dry tasting. But you could easily do that with other things, like other flavors that wouldn't make it so coil gunk and gross because 
like I get a lot of really bad gunking from uh, what saline from, from using saline. Yeah, if you use it, if I use it too much, like it just gunks like crazy. Well, it got shot down pretty hard across the board. Well, it's, it's, just sort of, it's just sort of, it's just kind of a wasted effort. Like it, it's a nice theory, but reality is that I think the people that were tasting it or felt like they were tasting it was just kind of a placebo thing. Now I have my shirt's dirty. Awesome. Filthy. Filthy I'm fallout a, shelter. I don't give a fuck. I just, I just woke up like 20 minutes ago, so... Yeah, no, I agree. The saline, it's a nice, it's a nice theory, and it would be nice if it works, but it doesn't really. Um, All right. So the beer nuts, however, is salty, but it comes with the trade off of being kind of nutty too, like, like super heavy acetyl creosine. Um, but it is definitely salty tasting, and I want to, I want to do some more testing before I do a long shout out for DIY FS's pretzel flavoring right here. Uh, Don was kind enough to send me uh, two ounces of it for some projects. Uh, What's it like? What kind of pretzel? Like really, a roll gold? It's like a real bready, doughy, salty pretzel, but not. not oh, like, like a uh, like a sports pretzel. Like it's kind of in between. Pasta. It's a little dry, so it's not quite like a buttery, big. You know those big, thick German ones that you get from like the hot pretzel shop or like at a sports stadium right. or something like that. But it's not quite like a cracker dry either. So it's a little bready, almost like the consistency of like toast or something. It's a little salty. Um, but it's but pretty it's, dry. It's salty though. How, do you, how are yeah, they it's getting definitely it? salty? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to ask Don to see if she has the SDH for it or if she'll release them. She may not want to. What's that? Just to suggest savory, drop a saline. Yeah, so no, yeah, drop a saline and straight tobaccos could be really nice. Uh, or apple cider vinegar to add a little acidity to your tobaccos works really well. So you're putting a drop of ACV in a tobacco to... It really just adds a little bit. Right, the acidity so, adds like a little like bright note to it. So it's kind of helps it be fresh, flavor, fresher flavored so it doesn't like taste like stale old tobacco like a lot of tobacco flavors do. And what's that, like one drop in what? Like in 30 mil? mil? Yeah. Because it thins, and if you go much higher than that, like it gets kind of harsh. <sighs> Let's All right. see. Let's see about this. My wick dry yet? Not quite. Yeah. So I have another tobacco that I'm going to be ready to release pretty soon. I know I don't release them nearly as often as you guys, but I'm pretty crazy about making sure they're perfect. Um, pretty excited about it. So uh, I made some use of Lovage or Lavage or whatever, which I know a lot of people who ended up getting it weren't sure what to do with it. So I wanted it to make something and wood spice. You Lavage it. Yeah. So it adds like a kind of a wet back note, like it that counteracts some of the super dry notes. When you take red burley and flu cured really high. Is it a tobacco? Yeah, so I use it's flu cured, uh, native tobacco and red burley, and they're all like it's like six percent total tobacco between the. Oh, three but is the love is lovage considered a tobacco? No, it's a root, like right. So lovage so is a root root. vegetable. So um, it's like uh, so it's really vegetal, vegetal, vegetal. We had to talk about that last month, uh, last time I was on. Hey, let's talk about Magic Mass. Do you use it as well? No, I don't really find that Magic Mass is very necessary. What is it? It's just triacetin? Is that yeah, it's just, what it is? It's like smooth or whatever. Um, triacetin. Uh, so magic Mass can be useful if you have like harsh notes that you just can't figure out. And you really like, like everything else about your flavor. So uh, I'll um, use Whip whipped cream TPA for that. So if right, you're using magic, magic, isn't it? Yeah, heavy. So if you're using, if you have a cream recipe, you can sub out magic mask and use uh, uh, flavor apprentice whipped cream at like a 1% as a high. And that adds a little together, puts it together a little better. And then it almost gives you like what I refer to as a light cloud. So if a Vienna cream or a vanilla custard would be a heavy cloud, the 
the whipped cream has something to it that almost lightens your mix up. So it's really good at 1% instead of the magic mask. I don't use it usually. Like I don't, I have it. I used it right in the beginning when I was mixing and then I just didn't use it after that. Uh, I use it just sometimes with tobaccos. Um, but not very often. I think only when in Fireside, and that was actually to help blend the bourbon with the the whiskey flavors with the tobaccos. See, like the magic mask, the thing for me is like you make something. If you're putting that in in your first round of making something or second, that could be your problem. And it's really hard to diagnose your other issues with the recipe if you've like muted it accidentally with the magic mask or you've change the composition so usually i start testing without additives and then add them as there's problems that can't be fixed we you know you can change your mix round two round three and you fix most of the problems without those additives i just started using sour um i tend to not like sour vapes like real acidic will almost even bother me just like if i drank lemonade or real sour drinks my mouth's sensitive from probably years of smoking, so I stay away from sour stuff. And I just started with uh, flavor apprentice sour, so maybe you, you want to chat on some sour tips sour or additives. sort of. So I make my own sour additive, but that's uh, because I use it in different ranges. Um, but TPA sour works just fine for like most general applications. I like it. You can use it like. If you really like your fruit blend, but it's like too thick or too syrupy, um, a little bit of CPA sour added can kind of help add the, some brightness and take away some of that that really thick base f uh, flavor to kind of thin it up a little bit. So you're um, making your own? Really and, yeah, I make my own. I just buy citric acid powder and how's that make my own delicious. How does that compare percentage-wise to what uh, TPA? I think TPA is... Are there Five percent mix, five percent, five percent or ten percent. I can't remember which. One. And what do you like to use it lower? Or? I use it higher, um, but I use less of it. Sour wizard is yes. the same thing. Sour wizard is citric and malic acid together. Um, I use okay. them sometimes so, separately or together. And you're right, Dave. TPA sour is malic acid, not citric acid. My bad. And then so we're. Okay, so they're not the same. So sour wizard would be, but they both they both like, bring acidity to the mix, right? Like, yeah, like so someone that's never used sour stuff would would they want to use citric acid? Would they want to use malic acid? Like, what what sort of? They say no, nah, they'll dissolve your cotton if you use too much. Yeah, it breaks down your cotton faster um, and kind of trashes up your coils a little bit. Um, I yeah, just how much do, I have to find my sheet, but it's like a, a gram in in ten milli, in a nine milligrams. So one gram to nine milligrams PG. And why do you do that? Why do you make your own versus buying it? For the um, price change, or is there something mostly else? for the price change? But I make my own because sometimes it's better to get a more potent citric acid and use less of it to because it. It, it alters your parts per million when you're working in delicate mixes, right? So your parts per million, like the actual amount of liquid you're adding changes the parts per million of the other flavors in the mix. Okay. So you're using less of it, so it should change. It, theoretically, it changes your flavor profile less while still adding the sour. Does that make sense? Right. So you're instead of going upward, gotcha. You're not wasting your PG on the sour. You're, right. You can... Right, exactly. I can I can use my PG for flavors, if that makes more sense. Right. You kind of hit diminishing returns after a while, um, and yeah, no. Either way, I still don't get a lot of sour actual sour flavor out of it. Um, yes, it new nicotine makes the solution, and you can just buy citric acid on like Amazon. I got mine from a chemical supply place. So you're putting citric acid in, and then I use the uh, acid, but. Um, I think so I most, most, of these, most of the sours on the market are malic acid, but new nicotine sells a solution. Sour, sour Wizard, FA Sour Wizard has citric and malic, I believe. 
and then TPA Sour okay. is my like. Yeah, I can look at these notes things too. While we're um, on, uh, oh, go ahead. We got some notes. Let's there. see. Oh, you had that flavor. Yeah, right. I think. Yeah, so I have so for the bitter wizard, they say start at one. That's what flavor art suggests, and then it says it'll give your e-liquid a pleasantly bitter aftertaste, and only becomes more effective as you increase the dosage. It it blends extremely well with dark tobaccos and uh, dark flavors. So that's the bitter wizard, and then Magic Mask says. Reduce the acid perception without modifying the pH of your e-liquid recipe. It acts as a tongue receptor level, temporarily reducing the acid perception, and thus improving the overall mouth feel. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't actually have their sour wizard, so I don't know. And then that's the magic mask, mask they're saying it does that. It says its action lasts 58 seconds and involves only the acid receptors. The tongue reacts very strongly to acidity, which helps bring out subtle flavors in many foods. And they're saying start with 1%, increase, decrease to taste. So they're using, a, so the magic mask they're saying changes the pH level, which would be, uh, let's see. So if you're reducing acid perception, it's probably a base then that just brings it, to, brings down the acidity. Correct me if I'm wrong, concrete or ID 10T. Um, yeah. <coughs> no, that sounds pretty spot on. Um, where'd you get that yeah. shoe from? I'm curious. I will, tell you. I will tell you afterward. All right, sounds good. But if anyone has a question on a certain flavor, I've got <laughs> I've got their uh, their opinion. Fucking Matt. Thank you, His beard Matt, holiness. Matt Digital, for uh, the obscene number of tester bottles you sent me. Uh, oh, wow. Look at all Are these. Are they chubby gorilla? This is, uh, they were both addressed to his bearded holiness, which caused a little drama in the home, which was excellent. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't have the address labels or I can show you guys. It was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, Christopher's nicknames his bearded holiness that's for true. any you followers me, out there. If you send me any mail. Uh, like literal mail. I prefer that you address it to his bearded holiness. That's good. Um, no, I really appreciate the bottles, man. Uh, it's going to go a long ways for me to, I kind of hit a, a wall of having to stop and wash bottles because we used a ton of sample bottles. And uh, I was, I had to stop single flavor testing for a while. And now I'm able to get back to it. And I'm over halfway through the Flavora line as a result. And I, I am moving at like five to 10 flavors a day. I'm pretty sure that if you join uh, Summer Clouds, I have that one, but I haven't messed with it very much. Let me look at my notes. I have it saved here. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll give you. I'll give you Summer Clouds. Let's see. That's the peach one, isn't it? That's a new one, by the way. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, like a I floral so. peach. It's not new. It's not new. It's been around for a while. Oh, there. Yeah. Okay. It says sweet yet subtle. Summer Clouds delivers the pleasant taste of fruit punch. They're referring to it as fresh fruit. A combination of summer fruits we all know and love. Uh, try mixing with a hint of sweetener and some other fantastic fruits. Ooh, F.A. saying add a little sweetener. Yeah. So, yeah, I get, it's like a floral peach to me. Like, that's what I get. Like, floral, like a little bit of peach rings. Um, but and a little bit of citrus. I don't really get any milky tones with it. It goes really good with other stone fruits, like to brighten up, like really like thick peaches. Like FA white peach is kind of like thick and syrupy, so it adds like a nice brighter counteraction to help it not be so you know heavy duty. Or if you're using one of the other like kind of musky peaches, like cap juicy peach or something like that. I won't suggest using TPA Juicy Peach ever because it, I don't. It just tastes like shit to me. What about FA Rose? What's that one? Have you tried Flavor the, the, Rose? It's a tricky one. Yeah. Rose is kind of hard to work with. Um, it's super musky. Let me look at my notes here too. While I while I talk about it, because I don't like to fucking. Mm. 
it's uh it's just it's trick it's tricky to work with it uh it doesn't like to it doesn't com compromise very well you know they're like with other flavors it doesn't like to bend to their will it kind of stands out a little bit it's a little chalky too um and kind of dry it's really strong and i i just get a really musky note rose note it's not as good as um their other florals though it's still it's still pretty useful yeah dome junkie you uh you should check out hangsen as i say it h-a-n-g-s-e-n they're from china i love those tobaccos and i'm i'm a big tobacco guy um i don't want tobacco to taste like licorice though so that's something that puts me off on the, the anise note to it uh so there's red usa mix from uh, bull city there's one called tobacco blend i mean just pick up four or five of their if you sort by best selling and pick up the tobaccos they're, i'll do one percent with a ry4 double at a three or four and that's awesome I mean, it just hits the tobacco feel that you're looking for. So if you're uh, vanilla for pipe by Inaware is really cool. That's a good one. And then um, I've heard a lot of people swear by Latkia, Latika, something like that for uh, Inaware. I don't know. Uh, so Christopher. flavor art and Inaware tobaccos are really similar in a lot of cases. So a lot of the like the similarly named tobaccos, um, like in aware it has the five five five, and flavor it has the five five five, or the AM four A, or the seven leaves, or any of those. Like they're really super close to the same thing. Um, sorry with the the screeching in the background. My, my kids on a on a rampage. Um, they're really similar to me. Flavor art tobaccos I find to be a little smoother overall, and a little less, a little more forgiving. Um, in aware tobaccos are um, pretty good. Sometimes they're a little dirty. And Flavora tobaccos, um, overall, I think they're more authentic and more realistic on the average. There's still some, I, there's a lot of flavor art tobaccos that I don't have and I haven't tested, so I can't speak in any serious authority with them. But so far, the Flavora tobaccos have been really good. They have a little more body and depth um, and a little more, a little more nuance. A little more yeah i mean they have they have about complex profiles when you're looking at the tobacco list there's about 20 and if you're counting uh like storm and uh some of those other emotion ones right yeah yeah you know, there's, there's, there's about 20 flavor art and then uh cowboy and um the other one that's like uh Cowboy is one of the most popular, though, and then I think Soho is probably their most popular tobacco. It's like a sort of ROI four. Oh yeah, that one. Rich intense. I use the daylights on the Soho. It's good. That's actually... Jennifer. That's Jennifer's favorite thing too. Yeah, I think so. Probably their most their most popular tobacco. It's really nutty. Um, and it's kind of dark. Yeah, re recommended percentage twenty. God dang. Yeah, that's crazy. I wouldn't. I use it like six to eight percent, which is pretty high for tobacco, anyways. But and I you just do it straight. Uh, no, I usually throw a little extra shit in there with it, but it's got a little bit of caramel, a little sugar, some nuts flavors in there, nutty flavors, not nuts. I just waited for that to go perverted in chat. Yeah, uh, Doctor Steve, he's in chat. He's the rude one. He's the one. He's the non-suitable for work one. Filthy savage. We we let him on the show, but Facebook blocks all the stuff he says, so it just sounds Everything. like he's not talking. Yeah, we got profanity warnings the last time we let him on the show. Uh, We're looking out for the kids. You know what's interesting on here? Uh, it describes Vienna cream as a frosting. Uh, and it says use it for its creamy and slightly meringue flavor. So that's interesting to hear that. I wonder if there is a little bit of the meringue uh, concept. I was, I was just talking with the IDT like earlier this month about Vienna cream. I, I kind of like it better when it's fresh and it's got that weird sour tang to it. Yeah. Um, as opposed to when it's steeped. And he thought 
don't know. He thought that was pretty rude. There's something <laughs> spicy in it. There's like a light spice note of something that gives it a little more. Like if you were to take it next to fresh cream or creme fraiche, however you say it, because it's different different places. Let's see what they say here. Fresh cream. Yeah, so a delicate, sophisticated taste that makes you crave some fresh berries to go alongside. So then they're saying hint it up with vanilla or cinnamon, which makes me think, you know, you're, that's probably what's in Vienna cream. There's a little, little cinnamon and a little vanilla that makes it more. Any other questions on these? They, they kind of, they're not all, you know, exact, but they kind of, show a little bit into what they're thinking. Liquid amber tastes great by itself. I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, it tastes like beer by itself to me. It says if you love margaritas, you'll love vaping this flavor. I've never used that towards a margarita. I've always used it as a cider additive. Well, it adds like a nice kind of beer yeasty note. I don't know about it by itself. I never tried it solo though. I guess maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? <clears throat> So let's see what else is going on. What's uh, what's going on in the vaping world? The well, oh yeah, the, the guy got confirmed, right? That that Scott Gottlieb guy. Oh who yeah, also, the, the FDA guy that also co-owned part of a vape business. So it's probably yeah, shout out to doesn't, him. doesn't necessarily go ahead. So sorry. Shout um, out to him if he's watching. No, <laughs> right? I doubt it, but <laughs> one can always dream, right? No, I like the answer though. The answer he gave was like very much like I like vaping, and then uh, Trump fired that uh, that uh, I don't know what was he the head of? I'm not sure who the guy was. It wasn't the head of the FDA. He was the head of something else, the Attorney General maybe. And then uh, they there was a whole article I read that contributed that to like behind the scenes vaping lobby stuff so then it gets shot down in the, the the house or whatever they don't pass the cole bishop thing same day all the vendors that are signed up to the tobacco regulations get that deferment letter and this deferment letter uh is like it says that they they've added like three or four months or three months to all these deadlines that they were supposed to enforce to let the new fda administration review it all so that to me looked like that's basically like we're gonna let the new boss tell us what to do and you could basically get whatever you're looking for so I think that's I think that's very promising I mean and then what if, okay so what if the vape market opens up tomorrow and then does this vaping just blow up again do you think or is this, is the new uh, fidget spinner the the vape of the future? <laughs> oh, you're muted. You can't oh, yeah, I, was, I, was, I was typing in chat for a second. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, I don't know. I, I made it actually a serious point to stop fucking watching the news. Um, because outside of, of like, outside of like the vaping news, like it's just too depressing for me to bear. Um, Are you basically like uh, bunker living? I am. You see without the, rifle, the bunker the rifle behind me. Like I'm ready. Yeah. Um, there was a there was a show I was looking at. Uh, I think or no, it was a uh, Cloverfield Lane, and I didn't watch it, but I was reading the description of it. The J.J. Uh, Abrams movie, mm -hmm. and it's John Goldman, uh, John Goodman, and then uh, I didn't watch it, but maybe you guys have seen it, but. It said he just tricked a girl into thinking the apocalypse already happened. He's got her in this house, and then she starts to like doubt, doubt that it really happened. But he, she wakes up and he's like, you know, this is the apocalypse happened outside, and we're safe here. But he really just kidnapped her in the normal world. But I'm gonna have to check it out. Right. So I'm not like doing very good. Though. I do have a bug out back though. I'm not gonna lie. It's right behind me. <laughs> it's right behind me with the gun. <laughs> It's all the gear. <laughs> no, that's not all the gear. All the guns are kept somewhere else. I don't keep them in the house. Uh, anyways, back to flavors and stuff. So we're gonna. I'm gonna try this. Uh, I think my wigs are dry enough now. Try this. This cream soda. Concrete. Shout out to Concrete River for the, 
the first uh, ginger peach test that gave the cream soda vibe. So I'm going to try to build on that a little bit. So since you're the, the vanilla pro, what what is the vanilla in a cream soda? <clears throat> the vanilla in a cream soda is like a straight dark vanilla. So like vanilla Tahiti or vanilla bourbon, probably. I use vanilla bean ice cream because I was being lazy. Um, and I get a little bit of vanilla from ginger peach. Like not very much, but just like a smidge. So I, I didn't want to overdo it with the vanilla because cream soda doesn't always have like a super strong vanilla note. I'd probably use vanilla swirl, I think. In retrospect, I should have grabbed that, but I didn't want to dig through all my stuff right before the show. So let's uh, give this a shot here. Now, where would you where would you use uh, vanilla verse uh, flavor vanillas verse uh, holy vanilla? Like what? So in this holy case, vanilla, holy vanilla is kind of a bully, right? So. It's got a really great robust like vanilla flavor that's a little malty and a little creamy. So um, it's really super good and probably still my hands down my favorite vanilla on the market. But I would use flavor art vanilla pretty much anywhere where I didn't want a creamy vanilla um, or I didn't want any cream. Like I just want like just a straight cracked bean vanilla and I would use their vanilla bourbon. So you, vanilla bourbon is what you go for in this case of a cream soda. If you, yeah, I wouldn't do that. We're just straight vanilla, probably. And then where would you use vanilla at? What level? Uh, uh, with a 10% dilution, at like probably 1% or 2%, depending on how strong I really wanted to go. I'd probably start at 1% and work my way up if I felt that I needed to. This is pretty good, so but I don't use too much root beer. I use a little bit of flavor with so root beer all, to kind of give that vibe. So all the way up to 2%, you would use that? Because I've been testing it real low, not knowing really kind of... Yeah, you can you can be a little flexible with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like Madagascar vanilla too. It's really good. Um, it's not as spicy as the vanilla bourbon, so it's really good if you if you still want that dark, not super creamy vanilla, but um, you want it like a little more smooth and mellow. Madagascar vanilla is definitely a good choice. <clears throat> Hit so many names. So, uh, so you um, did. Uh, I have like 50 ginger vanilla peach. though. Too, so. I did ginger peach, flavor west root beer, uh, flavor west vanilla bean ice cream. Let me look. I forgot so already. What's that ice cream like compared to the TPA or flavor apprentice so one? I, I really like TPA's uh, vanilla bean ice cream, but it almost has like too much body for every application. Um, and I get a, a bit of like bakery style, like kind of buttery depth to it which is good and it still makes it totally usable in a lot of things but sometimes i don't want that all that extra body you know like if i don't like, it's just not always applicable and flavor western living ice cream is a much nicer like straightforward um vanilla cream it's not very ice cream like at all uh, compared to tpas um what about uh, what about flavor west bavarian cream I like flavor West Bavarian cream. It's similar to TPA's, um, but a little more buttery. Like it's like it just has more diacetyl. Like that's pretty much the difference. I think it's good. It's, it's not, not as darker. dense. It's not as dense and heavy as TPA's, but I, I think it's really good. Cool. Uh, oh yeah. So and I use salted caramel, ginger peach, almond, oba oba. It's really good. I think if I because the root beer will calm down in like two or three days. Um, so fresh mix, I think it's a little high on the root beer. I use three percent. But uh, what was I saying? Oh, I is there, but it's a is little, there a little root beer? too much in the. Well, so like you remember A and W cream sodas, like they have a little bit of that root beer vibe still, even though it's a cream soda, you know. Right. That's kind of what I was shooting for. I like so it. like a hint, a hint of root beer. Yeah, and I like what I can use. Yeah, that's right. So then, people know. What about ID10T? Do you have any carbonation or Concrete River? You guys got any carbonation suggestions? Any crazy stuff that maybe uh, Christopher didn't cover? Or do you just? I mean, do you run the risk of without? What about like lemon lime or what are they called? Citrus punch? What's going on there? With like a citrus punch. Yeah, or like I haven't tried the new one because they have the new they have the new 
uh, version two that's not flammable or whatever. But I like the old one. It's a little sharp, but it tastes more like Sprite than it does. A lot of people say it tastes like Mountain Dew, but I think it tastes more like Sprite. And I like Cap Lemon Lime. I thought it tasted like Sprite, and then it smelled really decent like the first day I got it, and then a month later it smelled funky. Like, uh, <laughs> like I don't know, it just kind of like went uh, almost bitter. Like whatever note was creating the, the lime in it turned into like a, a bitter lemon note. Yeah, I, it needs some ethyl maltol, honestly, to tame it a little bit. I haven't tried the V2 yet. Uh, I'm usually generally opposed to V2s in, in general. FA Aurora, that was the other one I was trying to think of. I don't have it yet, so I haven't had a chance to test it. But I agree that Flavor West Pink Champagne is probably the best fizzy effect, but it, there's definitely like a flavor trade off it to get it strong enough to get fizzy, like to keep it fizzy. like. You're gonna to have to taste the pink champagne. Like I, I haven't found a way around it. What is the aurora? Yeah. So that was that was that was the bottom line. The same. Like it sounds like Rick and Dave have the same kind of opinion. Like it's possible to get fizzy effect with some of the flavors, but not it. Not without the cost of using those flavors strong enough to actually get the flavor. Like you, you're gonna get the un, unwanted unwanted flavors, or potentially unwanted flavors. P Pure flavors tonic water for fizz. Was he Pure flavors tonic water? I don't know who that is. I've never heard of them before. Pure flavors, huh? Yeah, let's see if I can find them on the user Google. Pure flavors. Who is this? Yeah. Any flavor companies out there that come out with fizz, fizzy, you're going to win. It's going to be very useful. Bubbles, call it bubbles. It's a great name. Yeah, I think it'd be aware of it. We're able to knock it and nail it down. Because you don't. Right, fizzy cola. I'll have to check that out. I need, there's a bunch of Moldenberry that I need to pick up. Um, I heard a lot of talk about them. I, <laughs> there's got to be somewhere. I think Vapors Tech carries them. I'll have to check it out. They're not very cheap, though. And I'm poor. So yeah, the the orange creams. Uh, I'm testing the Royal Premium Orange, and then uh, I just ordered that. So hopefully it'll come soon. So the the problem I'd have with the orange cream is the the ratio of orange to cream, right? So you try to, and it really it really almost seems like it comes down to being uh, like one to two to three percent orange and then if it ends up at 15 like 10 percent creamy have you even though verve's dream signal perfected dream yeah signal version perfected like that's probably the best orange cream vape i've ever had it's pretty good um he definitely does a good so, job keeping it balanced uh i don't have the recipe in front of me offhand but uh our, yeah our so pretty vibrant and it stands up to a steep pretty well which is Different, simply flavors. No, I haven't. Who's that? Who's that? A new flavoring company, old flavoring company? Oh yeah, real oh, flavors oh. had a, has a soda base. Uh, concrete was saying, but it didn't work. The the VG one I tried and I didn't like it. Um, but I haven't tried the super concentrate. I just got that that free batch that they sent, and I was gonna get soda base, but I got candy base instead. Just put honeysuckle on everything, Dave. It fixes. Yeah, so for me, like uh, with the cream sickle, right, or even with you breaking down the the cream soda, right, right. What what we're both doing is thinking about how the cream sickle or the orange soda translates into flavors, right? Which seems kind of simple, whatever. But uh, yeah, like for I know you had a hard time with the caramel color, right? And it was the almond in your soda was a thing that, you know, how many versions, maybe talk about your, your soda history and what, what you've worked on and kind of felt like you've done well with. Cause I know so, you, so I would, it was kind of tricky and there's a lot of, there's like 30 flavors in like a regular fucking 
in like a regular Coke, right? Like 30 or 50 fucking flavors. So the first things I did was I, you know, I sat down on Wikipedia after like probably my first 10 or 20 failures of so trying to make a good soda. And I looked at what goes into actually making a soda. And cola nut is really common, right? Like that's that's what the so the cola flavor comes from um, originally. And it's a little spicy kind of, you know, spicy kind of nut flavor. And uh, no, nobody makes cola nut flavoring. So I went, uh, originally I went with almond. And then I discovered after more reading that, that a lot of dark colas actually use almond flavoring as well. So um, almond and marzipan were kind of slow additions. And then uh, more reading and more reading and more reading that, you know, cola companies or soda companies use vanilla and caramel really extensively to sort of like smooth over the spicy notes in cola nut. So it's almost like a, a EM, like a, trying to, the way we would use EM to bring the flavor down, they're using, they're using the, it the to, caramel color to push, to soften. Yeah, and to sweeten it too, right? So the caramel and vanilla are both really sweet. So like the more sugar and sweet stuff they pile into that drink, you know, the better people are going to like it. So, um, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. And then flavor was the closest, like straight cola flavor that gets a little bit of like effervescence that was available at the time. Yeah, they say, to say uh, others have come out better since then. I just haven't had the time to go back to it. So for the cola flavor, they say we recommend cherry, caramel, vanilla flavors. So then, yeah, so that you kind of came up to that on your own. And then the marzipan they describe as a sweet flavor with overtones of honey and subtle hints of almond. So you use marzipan in your sodas. Yeah. You're saying? Yeah, it kind of is an extra sweetener. And then especially when you're going with the cherry cola, like on Mar like flavor on marzipan has like a I get a definite like cherry tone from it, right? So it helps bolster the whatever cherry flavor you're using and help add to it without being so medicinal. <clears throat> so you how's that taste? How close are, are you? I think I haven't honestly I haven't come back to it since like a month after I posted that article. And then I did a few like Dr. Pepper revisions with like plum and some other craziness that worked out pretty uh -huh. well um but i really enjoyed it. it's on there under on my elr i think i named it like damn it jim i'm a data doctor or damn it john a doctor something like that just for funsies um <clears throat> it's pretty good i enjoyed them i think they're really solid they're rock solid like cola vapes i just kind of moved on for a while and haven't had time to go back to it yet but i might now that it's springtime i'm enjoying this uh, root beer flavor for what it is it might not be like full-on cream soda but it's pretty good root beer what do you think about using the liquid amber in there? Almost um, as like a... If I were going for a weird cocktail thing, maybe. But I get like a definite like yeasty slash beer note from uh, liquid amber. So I think probably not, no, <laughs> to be honest. So if you had more time to make this recipe, what would you, what sort of things would you put in it that you didn't get to? I think I tried to find... For, go ahead. For the cream soda? For the, yeah, for the cream soda. Like you said, maybe uh, if you had more time, you'd add vanilla bourbon. Yeah, I, I probably would have used vanilla bourbon instead of Flavor West Vanilla Bean Ice Cream, but I couldn't find it before the show. So, um, And I think in retrospect, I probably would back off the root beer by half again. It's a little strong. Right now, it's like super root beer forward, even only 3%. It gets a 2% ginger peach. There's a definite like cream soda kind of vibe to it, but the root beer is just too much right now. I might go with sassafras so instead of root beer. I'm thinking that you could possibly make something that uh, had the ginger peach and oba oba together. Yeah, ginger and peach and oba oba are both in here already, so it's just the other oh, stuff. So that, that just kind of... Do you have, do you have the recipe public, or is it... No, I I'll make it I'll make it public. I'll just name it. Uh, I'll and then I'm not sure. I don't know what's gonna go on with this orange cream, but it's it is the the best one I've made to date. And uh, I think there's something there with adding a little mango, 
behind the orange, but not not trying to make the mango uh, prominent, but using the mango as a back note of the orange. And that's where I'm kind of testing now is balancing the oba oba, the mango, the Philippine mango, and then uh, a couple different orange options. And I'm testing Flavor West Blood Orange. I have the Royal Premium and then uh, uh, the Orange Mandarin by TPA or TFA. So those are the those are kind of the, a, the things I'm playing with. I made it public, but I'll do a quick uh, where's the fucking screen share button right here. Which hibiscus? Yeah, fl Flavora hibiscus smells like leaves to me. So here's the and... here's the cream soda test. I made it public, so if you want to find it, go ahead. But this is the basic base here. So almond at 0.3, just to kind of bolster a little bit of the nutty background. Ginger peach Flavora at 2%. Oba oba at 2%. Flavor West 3%. I'm not sold on this 100%. Uh, so I might go to 1.5. Uh, salted caramel at 0.25 and vanilla bean ice cream uh, at 3%. I think it's good, but I think I might, in retrospect, I might go for something like vanilla swirl with uh, vanilla bourbon instead of this. So let's yeah, I think and instead of the vanilla it's, bean. Oh, it's public yes. Yes. oh, shit, I forgot my thing. I got this software that came with my camera that does this, yeah. but it like does these really weird like clipping things and shit. So like, uh, let's turn it on. Rogue One. Right, you like that? Yeah. Hey guys, spoiler alert, Leah dies at the end. Oh, too sad. Salty caramel, it's a really rich, like super sweet caramel. Uh, I probably, I usually use FA caramel, but like I said, I just didn't have enough time before the show. We like just came up with the idea like literally like four minutes before we started. And I don't know if any of you have seen pictures of my mixing station, but it's really messy. So uh, are you gonna it's not messy, it's just like crowded. It's fuck. So like, it takes me a while to find shit. So, go ahead. You're gonna ask me something. Well, maybe maybe next week. Let us know how that turned out, and then maybe put a revision together of like your dream mix. Yeah, maybe uh, I'll start working on that cream soda. Like, it's a fun profile, and I don't think it, it's really been done very much. So, I ran out of vanilla swirl, or I would have. How do you uh, do that? How do you run out of vanilla swirl? Because I use them epically, like. I, ha I get the larger bottles of the, the marshmallow and you drink sweetener. And yeah, pretty much in vape form. <laughs> it's the same thing. Next yeah, slide, no, I'm, liking, I'm happy with it, but we'll, we'll revisit it. Sorry, go ahead. Eight, hours, we'll it eight hours of content DIY. Lock yourself in a room. Spend the whole day with us. You can do it now. Yeah, let me shout out Aegis Makers. If you've never been to the site somehow, you watch our YouTube, but you don't go to our website, crazy, and maybe you go to our website, but you don't have our app. What are you doing? One dollar. It's awesome. It's got every podcast. It's got lots of recipes. And uh, you never run out of vanilla swirl. Remember that, kids. This should be just done. So that's what we need. We need automatic, automatic flavors that I can just set, like, you can, you know, what's fun though. Let me share this real quick. Uh, on Amazon, you can order the dash buttons and you can make custom dash buttons. And I think you can even order the real ones and you can set the dash button up to be uh, VG and PG from essential depot. So you could order a custom, uh, VG PG button, you just push it and it's going to order it from Amazon. So I thought that was pretty cool. If you want to hack your DIY life to like pushing the button, for, I need more VG. That's that's good. I don't. That's weird. I don't know. <laughs> you know, we you got the bug out bag and the gun behind you. We know how much technology you like. <laughs> yeah, it's too far. It's too far, man. Like that's like one step away from Skynet, right? Like when uh when they show them Google Maps and uh, uh, Parks and Rec. And Ron Swanson just throws the computer out. And once he sees what Google Maps is, he just trashes the entire computer. It's funny. Well, we did it. We made it to another day, another show. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Uh, yeah. it's, it's been good. It's been fun. Uh, we've got a lot of new stuff planned for the show and some um, 
ideas for some extra concurrent episodes that maybe won't be live. Um, so what I'd like to do next week, I think we're going to try to bring on Vex or another new mixer to yeah. do like a beginner versus like a beginner forum, right? So they can come in and ask like all their beginner yeah. questions live, like directly to us uh, on live video. And you guys can continue with the video chat, of course, as well. And then today was good too, because we covered most of the additives. I mean, yeah, we, not all of them, we, we missed. Uh, we missed. We actually missed well, a lot of them, but we, we covered a good we covered, a few big ones. The so carbonation can, thing came up like a lot this week. So, yeah, carbonation, and then salt is another one we covered, and then we covered colas and all that good stuff. So, thanks for watching, everybody. I think we hit our time. Have a nice yeah. Sunday. It's been it's been good. It's been good. We'll be back next week, same time, same bad channel, all that shit. Yeah. Cheers.